Hi guys, today I'm going to tell you how an unknown author like me managed to be published by Boom Studios. I had my book done, I had all pages ready, and I knew there are two ways for me to publish my book. Hang on. Self-publishing and finding a publisher. Self-publishing. So you have much more independence, but at the same time you have to deal with all the struggle of distribution. I read this book, A Natural Talent by Jason Brubaker. It's a very nice book that explains you a lot about self-publishing and all the struggles to sell your book in a digital age. So after reading this book, I thought that would be too much work for me. I didn't have space to store the books. Oh man. Because you can go on the print route and you have to print yourself, go on a Kickstarter campaign or a crowdfunding campaign. And this would be way too much for me. But I did uh, online comics, Friday comics, uh, I published for a few months this book with my brother, but we didn't have many followers. I think it's because uh, we didn't have so much engagement with the community. And this is something that uh, it's very hard when you're self-publishing. But at the same time, some web comics can be very successful. And if they have a big public, they manage to be published. Like this book here, T.D. Walden. She published on a Sunbeam for years until a, a publisher eventually found her and she got this very beautiful book here now printed. So it's one way that you can always kind of get your work out there. So now with the internet, it makes it very easy for people to see your work. Online comics can be a way just to show your work and have your work out there. So taking all of this in consideration, I decided to find a publisher. So once you decide to find a publisher, there are three things that are very important for you. First thing is to choose a publisher who has similar books to the one you want to publish. So you have to check genre, for example, if a horror kind of a publishing house, you don't want to actually to show them your, your children book stories. In my case, I already love like Archaea books. So I loved already like Mouse Guard and Rust. So it was easy for me to bring a girl in the Himalayas to them because it was a perfect match. Second thing is to find out if this publisher accepts unsolicited material. Marvel Comics, DC Comics, they won't accept unsolicited material. So check it out before you send. And the third thing, it's very important to work on your submission. Check the guidelines because each publisher has different guidelines. Look carefully what they want and submit your work. The submission process, it's a, it's a very simple process, but there are some steps that you need to follow. Let me show you how I did it. You can come here to the submission website. There are three things that are important, and this is pretty much standard to any publisher. And this is the cover letter. So in the cover letter, you have to, you know, to introduce yourself and tell why you were telling that story. One thing that's very important is the story behind the story, why you are telling that story and why that story is important to you. So you write that down as well. In my case, in the Girl in the Himalayas, I wanted to tell a story of someone who is not welcomed by the society that's adopting her and how she deals with inclusion and issues like being part of a community. So this is something that was also kind of very important for me. And um, in my case also, it reflects a little bit the story of some of my ancestors. For example, the Vignoli family came to Brazil as immigrants and they had to adapt to a, to a society, to a different society. They also kind of move into different countries. I lived before in Austria, now I'm living in London. How you actually get engaged into that society and how you are integrated. So there are kind of two sides and I think this is what I wanted to approach also in the Girl in the Himalayas. So this is all in the cover letter. 
And then comes the second part, this is the treatment. And in the treatment, you have to write down in bullet points in a very simple way, the different steps in your story, how your story starts, how it develops and how it ends. In the treatment, you also have the synopsis of the story. So it's synthesizing your story in one paragraph. And this is quite complicated, depending on the story you are telling. In my case, it was very easy because it's a story of a girl who gets lost in the Himalayas. So you already kind of have a, like an easy hook for people to want to read more. I also decided to to tell this story because I knew that it was a easy storyline. And if you are a kind of an unknown author, I think to have kind of easy storylines, it's, it's much easier for you to get published. The third part, that's artwork. In my case, I put a lot of attention in having a nice cover, a cover that would catch attention. It didn't take much actually for me to do that cover, but I knew that it should be something strong. I have a background in graphic design, so I wanted something powerful and simple at the same time. And then I needed to do six pages. The six pages also I put a lot of attention to have six pages that they are easily kind of engaging and catchy. Immediately, emotional connection to the characters. Now, girl in the Himalayas, you have the girl and it's the moment that she's lost in the Himalayas and she's about to die. So it's also kind of a, a life and death situation. As I have an easy storyline is six pages, I could put a lot of attention on the narrative and I think that's one of the strengths for me of this book, it's, it's the narrative. So these six pages for me were key to get Akaya interested and in asking later for more pages and I think you shouldn't worry if uh, the publisher doesn't get back to you like in the next six months. That's what happened to me. I even forgot that I sent my submission and then I got an email saying, look, we want to read the other 70 pages that you have produced of the book. To find a publisher was a key uh, step on my career because this could have actually been a, a kind of turning point and perhaps I wouldn't be producing comics anymore. For me, it was very important that I would have a publisher that would have some uh, financial return so that I could keep on producing comics. And that's how I managed to publish my book, A Girl in the Himalayas. And I think I think it would have been very difficult for me to get the same quality and the same distribution that a big publisher like Boom Studio had. So they published it all over the world and I didn't have to store any book here in my garage. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Subscribe to the channel and I'll be sharing with you all my story. Thank you very much. It's so sunny here in London. It's nice. Uh, it's a pity that doesn't happen very often.